All right. Okay, so really quickly, if you haven't been in a Google Hangout yet, and maybe you've heard this already from me, but uh, here's a short tour of the Google Hangouts Meet screen before we go ahead and begin. Uh, so this is where you are, basically. Uh, you wanna be looking for this toolbar at the bottom. If it's not there, all you have to do is either click on the big screen, right? Or move your cursor downward, it should appear. It's one of those that pops in and out so it can give you room, right? More room to see who's on screen. Um, so if it's red, if the microphone is red, if the camera is red, that means they're both off, okay? If you click on them, they'll turn white with red writing and they'll be on, all right? That's the first thing. So the, again, the mic, if it's red, it's muted. The camera, when it's red, it's off. Up in the upper right-hand corner, you see who's in the meet, okay? That's the picture of the little people and then there's a number next to it. Uh, you click there for the chat box. This is very important because this is where you're going to ask your questions. Since you're muted, you know, we don't want everyone talking at once. So um, it's best to mute your mic and then just put your questions in the chat. And then all the way to the right, you see yourself. And if your camera is on, you're going to see what other people are seeing. Okay. So to ask a question, you're going to click on that chat box right there. It looks like a square speech bubble. You're gonna type your question at the bottom of that box. It, there, it says, send a message to everyone. You click in there, you type in your question, you hit enter. So right now, what I'd like you to do is open the chat and you're gonna, if you haven't done this already, cause some of you are old hat at this, you're going to type in your school and your grade level or subject. So go ahead and do that now. Give you a minute or so to do that. All right, great. Just checking the chat to make sure folks are doing it. Okay, great, all right. So I'm going to, I don't know what I have after this. Oh, that's it, okay. Thank you everyone. And I'm going to leave this to Isaul and Leticia. I'm here if you need me. I'm gonna stop presenting my screen. All right, and you're on. Thank you, Lori, very much. I appreciate the guidance. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, today we're going to review some uh, communication aspects to English learners. We're really going to start off with elementary and then work into secondary, but you will see a lot of items that marry each other in terms of common messaging and common resources. Uh, I noticed that there we have a good group of elementary teachers from all over, so I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, for those who are secondary, uh, we'll have some resources for you today as well. Uh, tomorrow we have our second uh, PD office hours uh, at same time, different day, 9.30 to 10. Uh, so whatever we don't cover here today, we will cover tomorrow. I'm going to now jump into our first item, which is our parent page. Uh, the reason why we want to share the parent page first is we want to inform teachers what parents are receiving in terms of resources so you can build from there first and then look at the teacher page, which we also have. So as we join in and log into the teacher page, I will move down and present. Hey, Isol, can you quickly, um, oops. Yes. Can you quickly um, introduce yourself? Absolutely, for those and, that don't know me. <laughs> yeah. and, and Leticia and Mary and Mary and um, Mary Lee. Because. You know, we have an incredible team here today. Uh, we're so lucky. I'm Ms. Saul Orozco, a secondary EO uh, coordinator, telling a multi-services coordinator for the district. Uh, we also have our elementary coordinator and our coaches on board today for any questions and support. I'll let the uh, team uh, introduce themselves now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leticia Castaneda. I'm the elementary uh, coordinator with Multilingual Multicultural. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mary Lee. I'm your instructional coach uh, at the elementary level for ELD and supporting DLI as well.
Um, morning, I'm Mary Lugton, instructional coach, um, middle and high school focus on newcomer English learners. I'm really happy that so many old friends are here today. Thank you for that reminder, Lori. Uh, I understand that we have a pretty huge district and sometimes we don't see everyone and folks are, uh, you know, it's nice to see everyone through this uh, portal now. Um, well, jumping through to our first document, which is the parent document, I believe you will share it on the chat first. So you can use that to link in there. And I'll open it up as we prepare to put that resource, the elementary. Uh, parent letter onto the chat. Pasting both these out with the Spanish and the English. Spanish is up. So you should be able to see the Spanish and the English elementary. Did you want the secondary up also, Isol? Uh, please, for the secondary uh, teachers, they can uh, look along. We're focusing first on the elementary, and then we can uh, highlight the items that are different in the secondary for our secondary folks who have joined us today. Now, if you do not have it in the chat, uh, you can also find it in the WCC e-learning site as well. I believe if you go under the parent resources section, there are two letters to parents for English learners. And this is the letter that we'll be looking at today. Sorry, repasting the e-learning. Awesome. Oh, wait. There's your e-learning site. Sorry to interrupt. All right, folks. So as you take a quick read, uh, I'll slowly walk you through if there's any questions that pertain to this document or connect to an item that you're concerned with, uh, please uh, type it in on the chat and we will address that as best as possible. Our first point was just a kind letter because we're all in this together. Uh, we're just super happy that everyone's super patient, super strong, conscious of, of these times of social distancing. And we're happy that everyone can be as healthy as possible while learning at the same time. And uh, to support teacher and, and their strong work ethic and the relationship that they truly have with their students and their parents, our first bullet point really is to inform parents that if teachers are communicating with them, that that is our first priority to support that learning. Uh, teachers have been prepared, uh, have been trained, uh, do have knowledge of ELD standards and standards of other content areas, and that all still matters. So please listen to your teachers in terms of workload, in terms of activities, in terms of relationship building. Um, so point number one, we wanted to continue that connectivity between teacher and parents. So there's no miscommunication to uh, a certain prioritization. Um, that being said, um, along those lines, we just emphasized other items that have already been emphasized in the district. So nothing here should be super new in terms of the resources and the information. We wanted to build on items that have already been uh, introduced through PD, have already been shared out online, have already been shared out at MDAC meetings, so parents are relatively familiar if they have been involved, items that have been uh, shared out, historically speaking. In this, and you'll remember this one, the California ELD standards is our second bullet point to really emphasize the definition of ELD in terms of ed code, which means the time and focus uh, in terms of English learning and learning um, English. For parents, we decided to 
highlight certain ELD standards. And you'll notice that here, um, highlighting it now. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the ELD standards. We're looking at number one, five, six, and 10. So this year we've had a storytelling theme. Uh, <clears throat> so folks were practicing retelling stories and writing. And these are the standards that we're using. So the first one is exchanging information. And you'll notice a lot of the resources that we share uh, once we look through this in, in more detail and have time to look through it, connect to these goals of ELD standards. So parents are sharing information and ideas. Uh, we see parents are you know, communicating and conversing with their students about content areas. The second one, B5, listening actively and asking and answering questions about uh, what was heard. Once again, building on, on top of our PD this year in terms of retelling and storytelling themes uh, about encouraging students to talk and use academic uh, uh, vocabulary at the same time. B6, reading closely and explaining interpretation ideas. Once again, notice that this continues to connect with storytelling. So they're reading a story, they're retelling a story, they're sharing a story, they're conversing about a story. A lot of reading is happening here in terms of setting up the stage for learning. And the last one, and we strategically did four uh, because we, we also wanna focus on LPAC and the language domains. The last one was number 10 composing and writing an informational text. So yes, we have the reading, the speaking, uh, the writing and the reading that connect to the four language domains of the LPAC. So those domains are also being used. Uh, we wanted to stay on four items purposely for parents to know uh, what to do. Uh, and we did highlight some uh, components where parents have not been communicating with teachers, then they also have a baseline to how to focus and discuss uh, with, their, uh, with their children at home. I'll, I'll press pause here and see if there's any questions in terms of the chat for items number one and two, really teacher empowerment in terms of lessons, and item two in terms of incorporating the California ELD standards. Okay, as we uh, begin to type in, uh, there are two more bullet points for the elementary section. And then we'll jump into the secondary. Um, at this time for number three, I'm gonna allow, uh, uh, or I have Leticia, our, our DLI guru here in our district to really talk about DLI and then jump into the WCC learning before we jump into the how this document mirrors the secondary document as well. Okay, um, before I repeat, before I get started on that, had a question uh, from Rachel asking if you can repeat the four main components students should be focusing on for reading, speaking, re um, reading, speaking, writing, and listening. So, well, I think you're muted. If did you hear the the comment, the chat question? Okay, let's see. Yes. Uh, so, the four domains: reading, uh, writing, speaking, and listening, uh, are the components there. So, the four standards that we focus for parents to use are reading, speaking, writing, uh, or A B uh, A one B five B six and C ten connect to those four language domains that are incorporated in the LPAC, reading, speaking, writing, and listening, um, just so it has the main frame and follow through. So if we focus on those on that specific component and parents are only doing part one. So in terms of uh, how we interact with parents, 
parents are focusing on this and we only uh, did part one and I'll jump over here. We only did part one because part two is really more in structuring how uh, the lesson is going to be connected to how English works. And this is where you're at liberty to decide as a teacher well, how to connect these points to have a part one and a part two to make it an official ELD lesson. Um, so using the California standards, both part one and part two are necessary to complete that loop of learning a, um, for English learners. Thank you. And then there's also a chat quit, um, comment ask. I don't, did I unmute? Yes, I did. Um, asking if you can um, change your cursor to a bigger, darker cursor so it could be easier seen on the screen by everyone. How do I do that? Maximize? I, I can tell you how to do that. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> bottom bottom left hand corner and type here to search. If you type just here. Uh -huh. it type here to search, just type cursor in there and hit enter. Click, yeah, right there. Yep. And then you're going to where it says change pointer size and color, pick the one all the way to the right. And in the next row, also the one all the way to the right. Yep, that's it. And then you can just go ahead and close that upper right hand corner. You just go ahead and close that. Oh, I see. Yeah, the cereal got a lot bigger all of a sudden. Okay, Woo! I like it. Thank you for that point. Sure. Uh, I'll improve my tech skills uh, as we go. Uh, I think we'll see a lot of growth as well. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mina, for that one. Hey, so, are you going to continue uh, showing your screen, or did you want me to take over? Yeah, I can uh, show the screen or you can use yours. I just exited the screen right now, uh, hopefully to make it easier, but I can go back and present. Um, if you could, please. That way yeah. I can still monitor the chat. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. And I believe the question was, uh, or the, our next step was the DLI and the e-learning. I'll go there now. So as we're building out also the resources for dual language, something that's easily accessible by parents, uh, we decided to go ahead and use the commonly occurring cognates in, in elementary classrooms for teachers. So this is, pardon me, for, par for parents to use. This is also found in the teacher page that we'll be, we'll be going over to at a later, either later on today or tomorrow, I believe. But nonetheless, we added the commonly occurring cognates in elementary classrooms for the use and put a descriptor both in English and Spanish um, in the Spanish parent letter. So this letter you're seeing now is also available to parents or it has been um, made available to parents in Spanish. Everything you see on the page, if you go to your e-learning site and we included the links on the letter that you can just click on, And then you're able to select either families and, and regardless of the one you click, you want to click on the families one, Isaul? That way they see what the family. Thank you. And if you scroll, if you scroll up, go up to the um the family pages, Isaul. The drop down menu on the right, maybe I should have taken yeah, yeah. There you go. Thank you. And then the letters, the parent letters for elementary and secondary at the bottom um, in English and in Spanish, along with the resources page. You're gonna click on one there, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you. So as you can tell that the family, pardon me, the parent letters 
are included along with the resources for scholars to continue their, their learning, whether that's um, language development with English language development standards or with um, for dual language. So Isaul, I'm, um, as we're presenting this parent letter, there is a question that came up. What about resources for newcomers with little experience in English? A colleague has a fourth grade student from Vietnam. So she re Brenda, she reached out to me yesterday and I did forward several resources to her. I believe it was Susan. And um, I'm also waiting for a call back because everyone is in shelter at home. I'm waiting for a call back from several districts who actually have dual language Vietnamese classes that they've started or strands that they have started. So that is definitely um, something I am working on. Um, another question from Rachel, are there hours that parents can call in for questions? And if so, what is the number? I will look for the number, Rachel. It is on the e-learning side. I'll look for the number and I'll post it into our chat as a link. And then I will make sure that we update our parent letters to include all of the sites that are available to parents, because that's a good point. The sites that are available to parents, we did not include. So thank you for that, Rachel. And then before we move on, there's one more question. So, um, <coughs> yeah, from um, Caitlin, it's do we teach ELD officially? And I see Saul is starting to answer that. So Saul, I'm going to uh, turn that back over to you, turn my mic off so I can start um, dropping in the links. Sure, is my mic on still? I believe it is. Okay. Your mic is on, I can hear you, thank you. So the answer to the ELD officially is yes. Uh, we are obligated by Ed Code to uh, support English learners. Uh, that is uh, a civil rights case, uh, Lau versus Nichols. So we are required to support English learners. Currently, the contract does state uh, in terms to a, attempt in terms of the social distancing as best as possible, as we find resources to best support English learners in this uh, really new teaching environment. Uh, but our uh, goal is to support them best as possible. Uh, as we improve our items, we will share those items so our students can be supported, um, really using still as guidance and uh, as a way to assure that ELD is happening using the ELD standards part one and part two. Uh, that is the reason why we've highlighted that as our second point behind our, our teacher uh, component of uh, priority is really uh, standing ground using ELD, par uh, pardon me, California English Standards Part 1 and Part 2. So if we use that in conjunction, we can really uh, begin to assure that that support is going on in terms of developing their English. Before we jump into the secondary component, I just really wanted to highlight uh, the resources here in terms of support items here. And you'll have a whole bunch of supports as you dig deeper into uh, the resources at the WCC e-learning site. Uh, these supports are also being used, specifically the sentence frames in English and Spanish at the secondary level, because we did want to mirror uh, our resources as best as possible. Jumping to the secondary before we run out of time, uh, we have about six more minutes. Um, the secondary component, which can be found on the secondary ELD guide, and this is open uh, to all teachers. All you need to do is search in your drive uh, ELD secondary guide, and this should pop up. If you don't have access, request it, and you'll receive it within a couple hours or so. And this is a secondary ELD guide. Once again, it mirrors a lot what uh, the elementary side is doing. I'm gonna go into that parent letter now and show you the main difference. Uh, at the secondary level, there is a, an assigned district uh, textbook. So as you notice, uh, teacher communication is priority. ELD standards uh, as, as pillars to our, our teaching and connectivity with student learning. And then our difference here is this textbook that is provided electronically at the middle school and high school uh, level. 
So if you are in middle school, sixth grade through up, students do have a password. As you can see, there is a username uh, that is their first letter, their last letter, and their ID number. And their password is WCCUSDS. Uh, easy way to remember that is S stands for students. And if you need access to this and for some reason it does not work, uh, send me an email at uh, eorosco2 at WCCUSD and I can uh, set this up for you uh, sixth grade and up if you would like access to these textbooks electronically for you and your students. Um, and then some other items on this one are just different uh, higher level uh, uh, sentence frames for secondary uh, resources. Once again, this is available on the ELD secondary guide that is an open resource for the entire district. If you just search it into your, your Google Drive, it should come up. Okay. I think we hit some major points today in terms of parent communication. Uh, if you want to get a, a jump on tomorrow's conversation, which is going to be focusing on the teacher page and the added components that are on the teacher page that mirror what the parent page has. So we're working in conjunction. Isaul, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt. I, had, I received a separate email, and I think it's from someone who isn't in our group th this morning, um, asking about special ed resources for our English learners. So that's another link I'm going to embed as we update the parent letters and the teacher letters. Yeah, great point with the uh, English learners uh, with uh, special ed uh, needs. Um, we can work on highlighting those documents. So certain items also mirror with a special education. Special education does have a page of resources also embedded in the WCCE learning site, but we can make some, uh, we can star some items that really collaborate with the resources that they're working with. Great point. All right, we have about two more minutes. We can uh, respond to any questions uh comments uh, i just want to remind folks we're back on reviewing the teacher page tomorrow uh 9 30 to 10. Isabel, i'm going to bring up just a couple of the comments and highlight them received a, a comment asking if the parent letters have been shared with parents the answer is yes they are already on the e-learning site for parent resources family and parent resources as well as by those resources by grade level as they're being sent out but um, it never hurts for it to come from teachers the more parents hear about it and you explain it to them as teachers explain to their parents um it, it doesn't hurt that and uh the resources that are on the a lot of the resources especially the standards uh for example uh, using the visuals uh, are items that have been shared with mdac for example and mdac has shared it with their parents so it's a tool that's been used, uh, I would say, beginning last year in terms of communication. Now, in terms of how many parents are still familiar with this, it's an ongoing conversation about using these tools uh, more so that, you know, everyone, even they've seen it, but, you know, they go, OK, well, I need I need to continue to use these tools. So it's a great time right now uh, to practice with parents and reemphasize the tools that have already been shared. Thank you. I don't know. Am I muted? There was one more um, comment uh, in the chat about what pages uh, should they read before tomorrow's office hours? <coughs> I would recommend or I would share out the teacher page. And we can share the teacher page on the chat. There's two of them. There's an elementary teacher page and a secondary teacher page. Uh, for those secondary folks, that teacher page uh, is on the ELD secondary guide. Uh, once again, I'm going to reemphasize uh, that gu guide is open to anyone in the entire district. It's not only for ELD teachers, but you'll see that information for the entire school year and then the amendments that are really uh, happening because of social distancing at the very top. Uh, with a teacher guide, a, uh, or pardon me, a, a teacher letter, a parent letter, 
and then the ELD resources page uh, for distance learning. Thank you. Another question uh, for K2 teachers, will we be getting Spanish ELD resources that we can use with Seesaw so that we are not reinventing the wheel? And it is on um, those ELD resources. The parents have them. Isol, if you want to bring that back up, the parent letter where we have the Spanish English bilingual resources so they can see that, please. Oh, it's yeah, it's on that one, I think. Thank you. So the parent looks a little different than the teacher. For the teacher, and we've, we've shared that link out also, has before the parent guardians section, there's a whole section for teacher resources where we embedded uh, the, the information that teachers need as they're building lessons or they want to reference, which includes um, all of the ELD tool toolkits. It also includes information, uh, more information about um, different websites for, for literacy, language development, math. We're also supporting math science activities i had a wonderful idea from one of the from one of your dli um, peers asking for more activities for our scholars so all of that has been embedded into this document so yours looks similar when you receive the teacher letter it looks similar to this but there's a whole section that's just specific for teachers that begins this document thanks nina for asking okay uh our Am I muted or not? <clears throat> We're at 10.02. Um, just to be conscious of time, I want to thank everyone here today. If there's any questions, please include them in the chat. We'll look them over and have some responses for tomorrow or reach out to you with an email if it pertains to you in particular. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, stay strong, stay healthy, and we're here to support in any way possible. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow.